Hey guys, so about 10 years ago in 2008, I can't believe 2008 was 10 years ago. We're all dying. I'm gonna be 70 tomorrow. Anyway, I was, you know, asking Jeeves, chatting on MSN, making some prime YouTube content like this. When I found a website where you can send emails into the future. So I went and wrote myself a little message typed away to future Phil, click the 10 years box, and bing bang bosh, like something from the Twilight Zone, I got my message the other day. See, I printed it and everything. The effort I go to for these videos. So I thought it'd be fun to read it with you guys. I had a quick glance, but then I was like, no spoilers. Have to share it with the internet first. So let's see what past Philly has got to say for himself. Hey, future Phil, happy emoticon. Hey, past Phil, I can't believe it's coming from a time where no emojis existed. How did we even live? Although the emoji movie wouldn't be a thing, so maybe that was good. I uh, hope life is good and you healthy and not dead. Let's check. Can't actually feel a pulse. Wait, oh, there it is. <laughs> Still alive. Imagine if I drop dead filming this video. Lol. That would be a bant. If you're still eating frazzles for three meals a day, today's the day you need to stop. Oh my god, frazzles? This has had the opposite effect. Do you remember frazzles? Do they still make frazzles? Frazzles is no longer a word. It's not even a word anyway. But I'm just gonna go to the shop and slam a six pack of frazzles straight after this video. Thanks, past Phil. Do you still have a full head of hair? <laughs> Sorry if you went bald. This was a big fear for me because I kind of won the genetic lottery somehow. My granddad was bald, my other granddad was bald, all my uncles were bald, everyone's bald. But thankfully, Mama and Dada Lester have insane amounts of hair. I think they got it for the rest of the family. So I inherited that. Glad that sperm won. Please stay with me. I've still got the emo hair. I haven't lost that yet. Maybe in 2019, that will be my time to change it up. Though if I could send a psychic beam back to 2008, Phil, I would say, please get a haircut. Seriously. Seriously, please get a haircut. Some things I hope you have in the future. A flying car. I mean, we don't have flying cars, but we do have drones. So I feel like we're getting there. Though I can't be trusted behind the wheel of a normal car, let alone a flying car. So I'm kind of glad that we don't have them yet. No wires. Wires are the worst, Phil. I wish. I wish we didn't have any wires. A rippling six pack. Uh, <laughs> does it count that I printed off some ads and stuck them to my body? Where do you live? Hopefully in a Manchester apartment. Or maybe New York, seven question marks. How random. Like it was always my dream to live in Manchester, which was only about half an hour from my hometown, but it was a big city. It was a world of possibilities. And that was just like the most exciting thing I could see myself doing, except I was weirdly obsessed with America. I love going to America. I wanted to live in America. I wanted an American accent when I was a kid. Just Americans, man. I loved you. I loved you. But funnily, 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 funnily enough, I hated London for so long. I had two visits to London when I was a kid and it really put me off. I had like the terrible London experience. Like my family wanted to go to all the touristy places so it was super busy. I had my face pressed against the window of the tube after someone's condensated butt crack had been there. And I think I walked in the path of one of the Queen's guards that was like, halt child. And that really scared me as well. So generally had some London anxiety, but then I came to visit some friends here and I grew to love it. And now I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. Else. So it's funny how that changes. If you told 2008 Phil, hey, you're gonna live in London, I'd be like, blah, what's wrong with you? Did you make any New Year's resolutions? Mine this year are to be a bit more confident and put myself out there more. I don't think that was the best resolution to make because you can't suddenly be like, I'm gonna be more confident and turn into a completely different person. But putting myself out there more was good advice because that was the year of me going, no, I am gonna go to that party or I am gonna take this weird presenting job that I'd be scared of and do it, even if I think I'm gonna hate it, it's never gonna be as bad as I thought it was going to be. And that was a good thing to do for myself, because even though I'm not like an extroverted break dancer now, I'm definitely way more confident than I was when I was like 15 or 16, a timid little beast that wouldn't talk to anyone. And resolutions for me, I haven't made one like, I'm gonna go to the gym or I'm gonna get a face transplant. It's been more that I just want to put on the best show ever for interactive introverts. So I'm just gonna put all my energy into that and hope everyone that comes is gonna have an amazing time. And if you wanna come, danandphiltour.com. There's still tickets available and you can come see me on a stage, pushing myself out of my comfort zone again. I wonder if you're still doing that YouTube thing. Uh, I guess. Uh, will YouTube still exist in 2018? Yes, it's turning into a monster. And <laughs> did you ever get 50,000 subscribers? I got a couple more than that. But yeah, I would have never had any idea so many people would watch my videos. So I don't want to get all cheesy and emotional, but 
Thanks if you've stuck by me since 2008 and thank you if you just subscribed today. Did you get a job in the film industry? Maybe you'll edit Titanic 2. <laughs> I mean, I would totally be down for Titanic 2 with Zombie Jack. Interestingly, after university, I did have a bit of a crossroads in my life. Like, am I going to pursue YouTube and keep doing this? Because I knew I loved this but it didn't really feel like a secure job at the time. And I got the offer to have a year long internship at a video editing place and that would be such a good opportunity, but there would be no way I could keep doing YouTube at the same time. So I just had to follow my heart and what I was enjoying and what I knew I loved and I decided to stick with you guys. So <laughs> I'm very glad I did, but who knows what that other fill would have been in the alternate universe. Did World War Three happen yet? Uh, <laughs> almost. Hopefully you're not reading this in a nuclear wasteland. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I am irradiated dust in six months, but I'm just gonna <laughs> enjoy being alive for now, as should you. If you're still at home, then say hi to the parents. Thankfully got my own place now. Also, hi to the grandparents. You should call grandma more. Oh, grandma! I mean, I can't communicate with the afterlife, Phil. I, <laughs> I could do a Ouija board right now, but she'd probably say, stop staring at the screen and go outside and play hopscotch. Uh, so I might go for a walk later just to honor my grandma. Hopefully you graduated from uni. Do you ever use your degree in English language? Here's my sexy graduation photo. So I made it, although I can't spell. So I don't think I'm using my English language degree to the fullest. Although I am using my editing masters. Look at this, fireworks. Totally worth the money. Are you still in touch with your friends from home and uni? And did you lose Lion yet? People say you make your friends for life at university. And I made so many good friends, but then everyone just went back to their hometowns, which was so far away from where I lived. One even went to Tasmania. And then I just kind of talked on Facebook for a bit and just slowly lost contact. This might inspire me to get in touch with a few of them again. I'm not a complete loner though, Phil. I did make some new friends. I mean, when I wrote this, I didn't even know who that Danny Snot on Fire guy was. And Lion is still going strong. I think he's uh, lost a few whiskers, but apart from that, probably an elderly lion now in feline terms. Sorry. Anyway, I hope 2018 is treating you well and the world isn't too messed up. Well, people are eating Tide Pods now, so I think it might be time to move to Mars. Well, there we go, that was interesting. And thanks past Phil for giving me a video idea 10 years into the future. Maybe I could write down a new message now and send it to myself in 10 years. Maybe that would be a new video idea. I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. The gaming channel is back in action, so if you want some of this, <laughs> then make sure you go and subscribe. Also, if you want to do some shopping, now is the best time as we're having a January sale on Dan and Phil shop where you can get plushies and backpacks and bunny slippers. So use the code HAPPY2018 at checkout for 20% off. And if you want to subscribe, you can click subscribe. My last video is down there, which was some bloopers from last year. Hope you're good and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.